I mean, it's three and a half sort of games with, without a goal now. Is that is that a worry or is that just a blip, do you think? Well, in that time, we've missed the penalty. We've hit the bar, we've hit the post. We've had the keepers making big saves. So for me, it's like the chances have been there. You know, I thought we put in a real high, a high class performance for a QPR team away at Norwich on Wednesday night. We went there and we held our own and we tried to play football and we tried to create chances. And I felt at the weekend... You know, we for large parts of that game, we were the better team. We just didn't find the last pass or cross. And that's hugely frustrating for me. It's hugely frustrating for the fans and everyone. We lost a very tight game on a set play. If we'd have won the game on a set play, the whole narrative around it would have been completely different. I get that. I do get that. But what I'm trying to say is where we are right now in the league is probably ahead of everybody's expectations. So it can't feel like we've lost a watch or dropped our wallet and can't find it. We have to be extremely optimistic about what's to come, which is Huddersfield at home and Coventry away. And if we go and pick up points in them two games, we're in a fantastic place. I want everybody around QPR this whole season to only talk with optimism and be positive. We have got nothing to lose. We're the underdogs in this league. I could name seven or eight teams that should be in the playoffs and should be going for promotion. And I can only name four or five teams below me with less budgets. But I'll tell you what, we've got a fantastic squad. It's young and we are going for it. We're taking a handbrake off and we are going for it. And if we can get to March in a great place, which is the ultimate aim, to be speaking about QPR with a chance for playoffs or promotion. We want to peak at the end of the season. I don't want us talking about that four days in October when we was top of the league after we beat Reading or so-and-so. I don't want to be talking about that. The story of the season has to, has to be written in April or May. I wouldn't welcome us going into the international break off the back of uh, a tough run we need to turn it around because I'm I'm like a bear of a sore head at the best of times so I think that's a warning for the players staff and myself that we need to get a positive result this week just to sort of stop me moaning for three or four weeks but we are looking forward to having the training time on the pitch together we in pre-season the squad didn't come together as quickly as I wanted Ethan Laird and Tyler Roberts arrived late Luke Amos did hardly any pre-season. Balogun didn't arrive till late. So we've not had that privilege that other clubs have had with managers that have been in situ longer than me. I think where we're at a football club at the moment is in a fantastic place. I think people need to remind themselves of that and stay optimistic because this is a young group that's got a lot to give. There's a reason why there's a nice buzz around the, the 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 club at the moment, and that's because we've got a good team and people enjoy watching us. I think when they do watch us, they're looking to see if it's for real, or we're not. We can't live up to the expectations. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the roller coaster of the second half of the season brings after these two big games this week. I thought Norwich and West Brom are two clubs with much greater budgets than us, probably three times. I would say at least. And I didn't feel we were worse a football team than against either. I thought we, unfortunately, not to come away with a goal at Norwich, which probably would have won the game. And certainly um, against West Brom, I felt after the first 15 minutes, we were the team in the ascendancy. We were a little bit too it's in the final third, a little bit fussy at times. But I don't think the performances uh, warranted us only getting one point. I think what's important is that we don't do well between the boxes and lose in them. It's really important now against Huddersfield at home that we make sure we win in the boxes because obviously that's where you claim the points. And if we do go and get uh, a positive result in these two games, we're going to be in a fantastic position, maybe ahead of where we thought we'd be at this stage of the season. It's important that we're not downbeat. It's important that we understand that the first half of the season's put us in an excellent position and exactly where we need to be at this time of the season if we want to go on and have a big second half of the season. So... Um, I think for me, it's still being extremely positive, uh, obviously with a little bit of frustration in the air and we want to take that out on the next two opponents.